welcome to Note One. Part two. Part two. Episode 50. Yay! We're half a century old? No. Half, half a century old. <laughs> <laughs> We're two episodes away from our anniversary 52nd episode. 52nd episode. Yes, we are. I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Wenny on Ravelry and Penny Wenny 2 on Spark People. I'm sorry, we're playing with our hair. My hair's really poofy on one side today, I don't know her. Mine's poofy all the time. I live with it. <laughs> it's the least of my problems. <laughs> uh, let's see. What oh, the 762 members on the Ravelry group. We're getting about 20 people a week. So yes, I saw that. I'm excited. Um, Keep joining. We just had a mother and two daughters join. I saw. I read that. I didn't respond to it, but I did read it. We are drawing for the sock knit along. Uh, well, the, technically, um, we already drew the names of yeah, the numbers because, because of the crazy. way it was situated. And, uh, so we will announce those prize winners at the end the of end. the show. So um, if you don't want to, if you want to get right to that, just fast forward to the end. Uh, got a lot see. to talk about today. Yes, we do. So um, tomorrow starts the Mar starts the March knit along. It's going for six weeks because we felt that eight weeks was just a little too bit too long. long. So it will end April eleventh, and that will be shawls, shawlettes, cowls, scarves, Mobius cowls, stuff that neck are warmers, neck, necks, <laughs> but not not anything with shoulders or sweaters. So. Right. And um, we will show you next episode um, what prizes we know at this point we're going to give away. Because we'll give away at least one skein of yarn from yeah. the, the prize stash. So we'll show that next week. Because we have so much going on this week that we'll yeah. deal with that next week. And if you could tag your projects as K1H2NECKKALNECKKAL. NECKKAL. I'm writing this down for myself. Excellent. So that's uh, pretty much all that I have to say. Cool. Is it my go I, first this week? I don't remember. You can go. I'm just going to go. Um, let's see. Crestview by Cecily Glowick McDonald. Got exactly no love this week, but I will just remind you what it is. The pattern is a cardigan jacket, and it is available for $6 on Ravelry. And... Of course, I don't have the picture. This is how much I have done of it. I think I knit one row since last week. That's fairly a little bit of love. <laughs> a tiny bit of love. I did actually go and take a few more skeins out of the stash. This is two, almost two skeins worth right here. Um, it did not get a lot of love because I really cranked on one of my other projects to get it done. So um, I'm knitting that on size 10 needles and the pattern was gifted to me by Diane of the Knittables podcast who is an absolute love mm -hmm. and I'm knitting it out of Classic Elite Duchess which is a discontinued base it is merino cashmere angora nylon rayon blend and it's a bulky weight yarn and I absolutely love it and as I said last week if you live near Bill Ricca, Massachusetts you can go to Hub Mills which is the Classic Elite factory store and you can pick some up for a fairly decent price. They still have like several four, different four colors. A, a ball. Yeah, it's a really good price. They still have several different colors available in sweater amounts. So yeah. check it out if you're interested. So that's Crest View. Um, I finally started the Get Back Backpack by Claire Crompton from the book The Knitter's Bible Knitted Bags. And I am knitting it on, it's supposed to be knit on a U.S. Here's a really crummy photocopied picture of what it looks like. Um, it's supposed to be knit on US 7, but my US 7s were busy and I was too lazy to go upstairs to find <laughs> another set of US 7 tips, which I have um, upstairs on my desk in my craft room. So I am knitting it on US 6 because that's what I had available. I already did the back of the backpack. Oh, okay. And I am knitting it out of my hand spun. It's Spunky Eclectic tar Targi Base. Um, I Navajo applied it. So this is the back. And this is from the exact same skein. Um, braid. And this is the front. And you can see it's like a completely different color. I like the striping. I love the striping. I'm loving how it's coming out. I can totally tell where... Um, 
this was at the beginning of the skein where my spinning was really uneven. And you can totally tell as you get up where my spinning got more even because it looks more like um, commercial yarn up here. See how it's more <laughs> even? <laughs> and this one, I'm at the beginning of the skein again. This is really crazy. I'm starting to get into the part that's more um, or even. And it's feel it, it's really stiff because I'm knitting worsted weight yarn on size sixes. But that's really good because it's a backpack. It's not going to be felted. I want it to wear well. I want it to wear well. I don't want things to poke out of it. It's for my daughter. Um, I, although I was thinking I might steal it from her because I totally love it. So the, I'm doing that. Um, the Get Back backpack is from a book that I actually, a friend of mine took it out of the library and um, used it and then gave me the pattern so which is a totally legitimate use of a library pattern mm -hmm. um so check out your library if you don't want to buy the book it has a lot of cute patterns in it and the backpack is super cute when it's done and it's knitting up really fast I think I worked on this for like two hours so that's that um the lotus blossom sock <laughs> I have started the toe that is my own design um one of my tech one of my test knitters has finished her pair of socks and oh. the other one, I can't think of her name. Okay. I, it might be Sandy Kins. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. It's something, I, I can't, I'm sorry, Tess Knitter Lady, you are so cool. But I think her name is Sandy for some reason. Um, or Sandy Knits. I don't know. Anyway, she has finished them. She's going to send me pictures. Um, Sadie from Yarnivore, Blue Ruin has finished one, at least one of hers, and she sent me pictures. I got a lot of great feedback. Um, I spent time on the phone this weekend with my third test knitter, Grandma Fish, who is Phyllis. Oh, you Hi, did? Hi, Phyllis. We had, like, a lovely chat. Um, she's never knit a sock before, and we, we, like, agreed together that this is probably not a great sock to learn on. <laughs> I told her she should try Wendy Johnson's um, detailed toe-up. So I think it's better. Yeah, But she gave me some really good feedback about the pattern and some things that I probably want to change to make it clearer. So it all worked out great. And I told her she could test knit something else for me that's not a sock. Because Sadie told me that the sock pattern is more, it has advanced techniques in it. It's probably not a great starter sock. So I'm really sorry, Phyllis. But it was wonderful talking to you on the phone. She's from Minnesota. So oh. I felt an immediate bond to her. So anyway, um, I was just going to say that as soon as I finish the sample sock, which should be in the next two weeks, I'm going to have Sheila tech edit the final pattern just to make sure like there's punctuation and yep. everything. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will put it up for sale. So um, hopefully within two weeks, that's what I'm shooting for. And um, hopefully around the same time, I'll start to put a call out for test. I have test knitters for my shawl already. I'll be able to send the shawl pattern out for test knitting because that's coming along great. So there's that. And the shawlette pattern is the other thing I have on the needles. And that's all I'm working on right at this moment. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am only working on a couple of things. So my first one that got some love was my Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy D. Johnson. This is the, toe, uh, the sock with... No. <laughs> This is Gypsy Girl Creations yarn. I'm working from both ends of the skein. It's a gradient, and I'm trying to use the gradient in it. And um, I'm starting to hit a little bit of the green on the blue. Like, I'm starting to get little bits of green on the blue. And I'm definitely into the yellow. And okay, There you go. You can kind of see it uh, on the heel. So this is, I'm um, turning the heel. It's got a nice diamond wedge heel. It fits perfectly. This is the standard sock recipe that my mom uses for all of her socks. Sheila put her onto it. Actually, I've used it before. No, I mean Sheila put my mom onto it. Oh, I thought you were saying that. She <laughs> no, oh, Sheila put my mom onto this sock. This is the one that my mom <laughs> Yeah, it's a uses. really simple one. Um, it is a slip stitch heel. It's not as quick as the short row heel. But for people who can't wear short row heels, this is a really nice heel. Because some people can't. They fit differently. Yeah. But so this is where I am at that. Um, this received some love this week because I only have two things on the needle. Pretty. And uh, I really love I'm excited for more of the gradation to come out. 
and uh, it's looking really good. Although I, if I planned it a little bit more, I would have might have gone like one row short on the increase so that my heel would have been blue instead of white. But I'm not that bad of a um, sock wearer. And with these, I'll yeah, take a little bit more. You don't wear care. much in the heel as much as you do in the ball of your foot. So. No, but it also, it's like my boys, I would never give my boys white socks. Their white socks, store-bought ones are atrocious. So. Yeah. Um, I'm using U.S. size 1, 2.25 needles on the red cabled chai gu. And I really love the chai gu. The join is very nice. It slips, the needles slip like butter on them. So if you're a beginner and you're afraid of slipping your needles off, don't use these. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody who likes metal needles and likes the slipperiness of them, they're really nice. And that's a nice sharp point. They're very pointy. I like them. I might have to try some of those. <clears throat> so this is what I'm working on. And I finished my second sleeve of my um, wonderful Wallaby sweater. I'm going to save that for my heartbreaks. Um <laughs> That's why the sock got love, is I had a little bit of a heartbreak on my sleeve. Yeah, and the I'll sleeve show has them. to go in the naughty closet. <laughs> yeah. My fault. I should have known better. But lesson <laughs> learned, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So those are the only two things I have on the needle. So what we'll, I'll do is uh, when I fix my sleeve, I should. There should be no reason why that sweater shouldn't be near completion. Yeah, I know. It's I have good. never did a hood, so I don't know what that's going to entail, but... I'll at least have the sleeves joined and probably decreased up to at least the hood next year, next week. Cool. So that's that all it? I have on my needles. Well, to, I finally have a, a, a date to write oh. this week. Yay. What happened? So I just pulled my Oh, card. I thought you broke your needle. I'm like, oh. yeah. um, so I finally finished Lysianthus shawl. I haven't Yay. woven the ends in yet because I blocked it last night. And I'm going to hold it up so you can Gorgeous. see it. Gorgeous. Do you need Behind help? Behind me? Nope, I'm just going to... Here, move to the side Ugh. of it so we can show it against the wall without... There we go. There's the um, the motif from the middle and the center motif and the edging. That's gorgeous. Oh, it's so soft. I know. How I much of the yarn did you have left out of curiosity? Um, I didn't bring it over here, but I had a significant amount of the yarn left. It's there are about a thousand yards of this. Um, it's, it's the same as this. Which is a prize. It's a prize that we're giving away this and week. this it's is the same just, base. now this is merino? It's 100% merino. It's gorgeous. It's hand dyed and it comes out so soft. lusciously soft. Oh my God. And, um, I blocked it using the Inspinity flexible blocking wires and I'm going to give you a review of those in our gossip and innuendo section, but I am so happy that this is done. I just wanted to say one thing. This is the first time that I've done a crocheted um, bind off and I found it really fiddly. Um, eventually I got into the rhythm of it, but I... Could it have been the size or just no, the fact that just you had the to fiddliness. change? No, it was just the Yeah, it was hard for me to crochet off of the needle. I don't know. I had a hard time with it. But it came out great. And I had a little trouble last week. I had to rip back um, eight rows into the pattern because I made a mistake. Like... I think I made a mistake like right, here's the edge. I made a mistake like right here. Mm. And um, so that took me a couple of days to fix, but it pretty much flew. The only thing I have to say about this is while the nups are very interesting. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the nups there. I can't see. Where? They're hard to see. There we go. The nups are like right there. Let me see if I can get my hand on the nups. I can't do this backwards. There. Okay. Hold that up. These are the nups right here. Um, I think... I'm not very good at doing nups, and they're a pain in the butt. I think I would put beads there instead of doing the nup. Um, I think it would have been very pretty. You would just have, like, eight or seven little beads in a triangle on each one of these flower sections. So that would have been my... That's my suggestion. If you don't like doing nups, just put a bead on there. But it came out, it's pretty big. Um, I didn't get to, I love the colors. This Orange. is going to be one of my go-to things. Um, I didn't get to block it as aggressively as I normally would because I can't, I still can't get down on my knee. 
So I blocked it on my blocking board on the table, and it kind of limited how far I could put it out. But it's still gorgeous still and a good beautiful. size. I love it. I'm so happy with it. It was a very enjoyable knit. I'm sad that it took me four months to get it done because of all the other no, stuff I was didn't. doing. Did it? Three months. I cast it on in October, right before I started the wrought iron cardigan, and then it got on the back burner. Normally, a shawl like this would take me four to six weeks, so I feel sad that it took me so long, and I really apologize to Infinity, <laughs> because at the time that I was gifted that's the right. wires, were, I thought cast, I would be done with yeah. it much more quickly. But um, anyway, that's done. Yay. This was uh, Lysianthus by Rosemary Hill, designs by Romy. I'm definitely knitting one of her shawls again, because this was wonderfully well written $8.50 on Ravelry she does a, a club called Lace and Pins I might join it well I have her designs by Romy the seven nooses Ooh. Um, I believe Diane from Knittables gifted me that you might want to lend that to me well um, it's I think that right now is four in there she renews like your oh yeah updates it every time until she you gets get it. the seven yeah Oh, I might have to I might have to borrow one of those from you because I really love it. Um, it was knit on US 3 3.25 millimeter for the beginning motif. You start out knitting the flower in the round and then you knit off of it to make the shawl, which I think is a fabulous it, idea. It, I I totally knit the shawl because of that because it's really interesting. Um, you finish the shawl in US 4 3.5 millimeter and I knitted out of Ivy Bramble's Romantica in the Night Sky colorway from Yarn and Fiber Company, which is m pretty much one of my two favorite lace knitting bases. Um, and I have, I think I have either four or five shawls out of this. And that's why I picked it out to be the gift, the prize for the next yes. thing, because I love it so much. Other people need to try it out. I have so, yet to knit with it, but the, oh, that's I that. Just a needle. Remind me to pick it up on. Oh, all right. So that's that. I really enjoyed that, and I can highly recommend that pattern. It was excellent. I would knit it again. Oh, Not with a nup, so. <laughs> um, I have two rate your dates. One you kind of saw last week. I have a finished pair of socks. It's um, Wendy's detailed toe-up sock that Wendy from Wendy D. Johnson that Wendy had just mentioned. I recommended it for a test Phyllis, knitter. the test um, The detailed toe-up sock has a short row toe. I chose to do the magic loop to uh, the Judy's magic cast on toe, and it's funny because um, this yarn is Snitches S capital K N I T C H E S yarn, which I really enjoy. Uh, two skeins make a pair of socks. Well, what I decided to do was continued with the skein of so uh, the second skein, and I used one and a third. So I have two thirds of the two skein. thirds of it left. Probably enough to make like ankle socks if I wanted to, or most likely will be a monster. Um, Cause that's, but I find it funny. This is the skein that I started with, and look at the pooling. And this I continued with. It socks toe up, and it's not pooling. I know. It's, it's just... weird how that works. My gauge was probably slightly off, but um, here this heel is a short row heel, and she has you wrap the stitches. Going back as well, and if you can so see... So you have two wraps around So them. you have two wraps. It's a much nicer... I mean, you can see the line, which some people may not like, but there are no holes. But there are no holes. So if you are doing a short row um, heel on a pattern that's leaving holes and it's disappointing to you or you don't like the look, take a check out at the um, detailed toe-up sock from Wendy Johnson and look how she does her heels because it really does make it, a difference. It really does. So these are a gift from somebody on a parenting board. Um, she had mentioned on Facebook how her feet were cold and I said, you needed wool socks. She goes, I know, I really do. And I'm like, you know what, let me just make her a pair. Yeah, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually used Wendy Johnson's double wrapping technique on my on my sock pattern. Yeah. Because I did a short row heel on my pattern. So, so. Um, This is just two by two ribbing because I don't know the person's foot. She told me the length and I'm hoping it will fit. Okay. I think it should. So it's nice and soft. They've been blocked. They'll be mailed either today or tomorrow. The other small finished item that I have is I was working on the burning... Barn raising quilt burning. I keep the doing burning that. quilt. Barn raising quilt. I tried to try to square, um, because I have Pretty. scraps and this always intrigues me. This is the Womize 
100% in Terra di Siena. It's gorgeous. It reminds me of the TV test pattern right now. <laughs> uh, it went a lot quicker once I realized I was on the wrong size needles. <laughs> um, I started this on US one and a half, and it calls for US two. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that makes Why is a big this difference. So, long? so I blocked it to nine by nine. Uh, and is that basically the size of the block, 9 by 9 Well, they say 6 by 6 But 9 by 9 is for a good project. Yeah, I'd say 9 by 9 because 6 by 6 is too small because then you have to do how many 6 by 6 blocks yeah, to make one. 9 by 9 is nice because by the time you finish knitting up to 9 by 9 you're pretty much done with that square for now. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, and um, 12 by 12 I think is just too much. Too much. All right. But... Um, this may be interesting to throw in stripes. Oh yeah, and stuff. So I it, might I might knit one out of some leftover that I have and see how it turns out. It's fun. Um, it it's it would Just be a mindless fun. car riding thing, and it's really I love wool mice. I know a lot of people don't like the feel of it. It's a very <laughs> that would be me, but it's a very cottony feel of yarn, and I understand I, that. I, it doesn't bother me as much when it's knit up. And it's a little. It's, it's a very splitty yarn but I will say I've only think I've knit with 100% but the colors are gorgeous oh my gosh it's so gorgeous I mean I just love this so anyways uh, that's the only one I have it was simple my you just want you cast on and you know where to go because it's the yarn overs so the blocking cool. wasn't the best because I don't have wires I had to do mine with pins which as you can tell I got my pins this oh, yeah. week. Did you find them? No, or I had to buy no I just bought new ones. <laughs> I wanted to buy new ones anyways. So yes. I'm sure I'll find my two boxes of pins. Somewhere. Somewhere. But those are my rate, my dates. So. Okay. So um, whirlwind romance. I did nothing this week because I mm -hmm. am not able to treadle my spinning wheel yet. I might try this weekend to treadle with one leg and see how that goes. <laughs> Um, so nothing on my whirlwind romances and future do you dates. have any whirlwind romances? <laughs> <Just> checking. <laughs> future yeah, dates. No. The rosebud trellis cowl. Can you show a picture of that pattern? Because I know you have it queued up. I do. I am gonna cast that on as soon as it's March, like which is tomorrow, I think. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> right? yeah. March I mean. is tomorrow. Um to kick off our um neck knit along. Trying to see which would be a good... Yeah, I'm going to do this one only because... That one's kind of hard to I, see. Yeah. Even this one's um, I was hard. gifted this pattern by the designer, Kathy Monahan, and it is one of the prizes that we are giving away yes. for the um, knit along. Sorry, I wanted to see there were no other pictures. And so. that's what it looks like. And intriguingly, I bought almost the same color yarn to use. Yeah, that's good because it doesn't get the glare. I bought almost the same color yarn to use with it when I was away this weekend. I will talk more about this yarn later, but that is my future date. I'm going to cast that on. I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't knit with this particular base yet. so Yeah, the rosebud trellis calls for DK weight, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you could do maybe make a larger one with worsted. I bought Merino DK or um, specifically for this and project. That's Tosh, right? No, this is string theory hand dyed oh, yarn. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, which I'll talk about later, but I am used that is dedicated to the rose bud trellis, and I will be knitting along. And I hope whoever wins the um, pattern will knit along too. On a side note, when uh, we gave out our sock yarn from the last from the from the mittens knit along, yeah. um, so they posted the um, finished socks, which was nice to see. That's cool. So my future dates is to finish the hoodie. I do have um, two other socks in the plans. My friend uh, is having a baby at the end of March, and I finished the blanket, which thank you, thank you so much for all the lovely comments on the blanket. I really don't want to give it away because it's so gorgeous, but I did knit with it in the intention you of giving away. You can make one for your house. I mean... Uh, to make one of those, that would be a long-term <laughs> project because by the end of that small one, my done. arms were like, ugh. But um, I'm planning on doing... Um, red socks ha socks for the baby because I have the cascade fixation oh, yeah. to do it with and whatever I have left I'm over I'm making a dinosaur hat for the baby whatever I have left over will be a hat so if you're if you're watching so, this Courtney just pretend yeah, you she's not <laughs> making a dinosaur hat she's not um, just because the baby's probably going to be a big 
size baby and the cascade eco, uh, not eco fixation will stretch a little yeah that's a good so, plan and i can knit those on larger size needles speaking of babies not only did my cousin's little baby trevor get home from the nicu this weekend yay oh good um and that kid has more clothes than i do because <laughs> every picture i see of him he's, he's wearing one. a different outfit he's like a, he's like an infant model um <laughs> And um, Auntie Carol, I want you to send me pictures of him wearing that outfit that I made before he gets too mm. big. Um, but also, my other friend that I made the little pink sweater and hat for, she had her baby, um, Abigail, and she was almost eight pounds, and she has the fattest cheeks I've ever seen. Really? Yes, she's as sweet as she can be. She had be. her late? No. I mean, she was due end of February. She just, they thought she was going to go early because she went uh, so early with her daughter. Okay. And she was having, um, she was having like, labor for the long. Well, it seems time. like four weeks ago that I thought she was almost. She ready to well, go. she was hospitalized <clears throat> three times because they thought she was in labor. She really, she kept having, um, like real contractions. So, anyway, the baby's here and she is Yay. as cute as she can be and just the fattest little thing you've ever seen. Good, it's so cute. So, um, crushes and heartbreaks, right? Is that yeah, what we're on Yeah, that's what I get next. Well, I'm going to go first. Well, you're supposed to go first. Um, first of all, I'm going <laughs> to tell you my heart, my crush. I have a big crush. Well, I have two big crushes. I'll tell you the big one. Um, my crush is the blog. And by the blog, I mean all the people that watch the show, like the masses or, mm. you know, I don't know what to call you, the viewer yeah. body. Because um, I hurt my knee last week, and I talked about it on the show, and I was like, eh, it's not that big a deal, it'll be fine, and I got so many PMs from people that um, had serious knee problems doing the exact same kind of fall that I had, and that made me kind of think twice about it, like Sheila will tell you, I got like... I got like 10 p.m.s in one day <laughs> where I was Get like, Ooh. Out. So I did go to the doctor this week. So my crush is, if I hadn't had you viewers and our- tell me <laughs> that I needed to go, I never would have gone and really bad things would happen. And this is why, because my heartbreak is that I went to the doctor yesterday. I'm not going to get upset about this. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> like- It'll be and, fine. Um, I do, as many viewers suggested, I do have a torn ACL. I have torn it completely across, so it is no longer connected. Ouch. I have a very high tolerance for pain. People need to know this about me. It's not like I'm like screaming in pain and not going to the doctor. I have pain, but I can bear it, so it doesn't... I, I just have... I'm the woman that only took meds for her C-section for three days. I just don't have a very high pain tolerance. So, normal people would probably have gone in on the first day. But me, I was like, oh, it'll get better. Um, the bad news is I also broke my tibial plateau. It's not, it's called a non, now I can't remember what it was called. It's still attached. I have a crack. Non-displaced. Non-displaced. I have a non-displaced fracture of the tibial plateau. So, my leg is broken. And let me just say, don't listen to your mom. <laughs> Two for two, Nancy. I know. My mom, I got to tell this story. This is, my mom and I were already laughing about this. When I was in the fifth grade, I fell out of a tree and I hurt my arm. And now, of course, I'm a much fluffier woman. But at the time, I had very little meat on my, I, I still have really skinny wrists. But I then I had really, really skinny wrists. And it didn't really swell that much. I told my mom it hurt. My mom looked at it. And she's like, my mom used to be an EMT. She's like, you're fine. So a couple of weeks go by, and the school called my mom because when I was um, in gym class, I was like, I don't know, favoring my arm in a certain way, and they were like, we think something might really be wrong with our arm. So she took me to the doctor, and I had a green stick fracture of my arm. My arm was broken. <laughs> And so I always tease her about that, where she's like, you're fine. Oh, and there was the time when I told her that I felt really ill when I was taking sulfa drugs, and she said I was fine. And then she came back an hour later, and I was puffed up like this, because I was having an allergic reaction. So with that history in mind, I called my mom the day that I wrecked my knee. And I really just didn't want to go to the hospital, just because I was tired, and I didn't want to deal with the emergency room. Mm. And it felt better. 
That's the the dangerous thing about an ACL tear is after a couple of hours of icing it, it really does feel not as bad. Everyone said that. It feels like, oh, this isn't really that bad. It is that bad. Get it checked out. So my mom, I told her what happened. My mom's like, you'll be fine. You don't need to go to the emergency room. So I called her last night, and I'm like, my leg is broken. You told me not to go to the emergency room, and my leg is broken. So um, anyway, my heartbreak is that I have an appointment with the uh, orthopedic surgeon a week from I, on Monday. Yesterday, next, so month. Um, oh, no, yeah, Monday. A week from I, on Monday, next Monday. Um, I, I looked at Dr. Google. <laughs> Don't, Don't look, look at Dr. Dr. Google. Um, worst case scenario, I could be in some kind of a cast or brace for three months healing the tibial fracture and not allowed to put weight on my foot. That's worst case scenario. And then I will have knee surgery that will put me out of action for a long time. I mean, I'm not out of action. But I won't. I'll be able to walk after a few weeks, but um, it, I'll just, it takes about a year for you to fully heal from ACL restoration. That doesn't mean you can't walk for a year. It just means that you're like, Jacked up for you. You're not going to be able to run. Not going to be able to run. Not going to be able to ski. And I'm telling you right now, I am not going skiing again. No. I'm done with skiing. Well, it's funny because my husband said, well, that, that means she's done with skiing. I said, well, she was a casual skier anyway. I skied like once a year for the so last few years. So it's not that years. big of a deal. I'm, I'm not going to. I mean, it's not like I'm some famous skier or whatever. The best case scenario is that I'll probably have to wear this brace that I already have for a couple of months before so, they you can know, do the surgery. Yeah, hubby did good. He did. My brace. husband bought me a really good sturdy brace. Detail, um, but yeah, it works. It works. It's it's crazy looking, but it it's it's really sturdy and I was they say you're not supposed to bear weight on a tibial fracture on Dr. Google, but um, since my doctor and the orthopedic surgeon have reviewed my x-rays and they haven't, like, called me to say that I need to come in and have it braced or casted, like, and get crutches, I'm going to assume that my fracture is not serious enough to merit that. <laughs> we'll find out Monday. I will find out on Monday. I hope on Monday they don't say, yeah, we're going to put you in a cast because then I won't be able to drive. So I had a cry out last night because I'm upset about it. She called me up 20 past 8, and she never calls me after I say She's like, six. what's wrong? <laughs> after 6, you hardly ever call me. Cause and I, I, I never We both have the cry. same thing, that once our husband's home, it's pretty much family time. Family time. time. Although yeah. Cam's been home, but that's just needless. Yeah, well. um, so when she called at 20 past 8, I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah, I cried a little bit. And I don't usually cry about myself. No. I'll cry out of like because something sweet or happy or I don't yeah. usually cry but I, I cried about an hour last night I scared my kids I was like I'm just I, I'm like I'm fine I'm not hurt I'm just sad because this is it's you know I, upsetting news. I just got over with heart failure last August and I'm like really I couldn't even have a full year of being healthy before I have some other thing I have Welcome to deal to with. Welcome to my world. I know. Me and Zachary. <laughs> we're like the winners of the shitty lottery. Yeah. Different levels of shittiness, but the winners of the shitty lottery. Yeah. So anyway, that is my... And, and my other crush is this Steve from Dramatic Nuts, who is my internet boyfriend. But I'll talk more about we'll him We'll get later. that into Bubbles and Bling, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bubbles and Bling. So my heart... <coughs> Bless me. you. My crushes and heartbreaks. My first crush is a few people on Plurk know that my hubby got a job last week. <coughs> job offer. And a few people from VKN because I told them. So, <laughs> Sorry. So Two my people. husband got Two offered people. a job and he's in the process of doing all the paperwork. He had to do his urine drug test yesterday. And it's funny because he's like, they go, when are you available for? And he's like, whenever you want. I said, well, that's because you're a clean. <laughs> I'm like, we don't, we don't do drugs. We don't, we don't need do like a couple of weeks before you can <laughs> exactly. be available. Exactly. He's clean. <laughs> There's nothing to hide. I remember when I had to do one, I had to pee with the door open. They had so to they check. Watch they you. made sure I didn't bring a pocketbook in. Do you know what's really crazy? I worked in law enforcement and, and I had to be certified by the state and the federal government. And and I had never to, had to yeah. do a drug test, but that was back in the um, 90s. So maybe they, they well, maybe they were afraid that it was like the high alcohol content back 
then because that was when liquid lunches were the norm. Oh yeah, maybe so, I don't know. Not anyway, me. <laughs> that was my. That's my crush. Um, he's going to be traveling, not traveling, but a far distance uh, to get to his. He's work, got a commute so now. We are looking for a new or car. She's getting a newer car uh, so she has to drive the death van And it's anymore. funny because we're actually looking for a low end car with high mileage. So we're yeah. looking at the Hyundai Elantra and I'm going to be getting his Hyundai Sonata and uh, be getting rid of my minivan. Which is which much I'm less sad. sad. The minivan has been a good ride. It's been eight years. We but got it is time we to Zachary. put her out to pasture. Oh yeah it is. She, she's out front. She can't hear me from oh, here. Oh well you know I still have to get home. <laughs> I can't so, believe you drove the dust trap over here I had today. no choice. My oh husband my God, my had God. to have the car. Oh. And once she's got cool and dinner, she's fine. All right. So my heartbreak. This is bizarre. It is bizarre. This really tests. <laughs> I've been told many a times to knit with the same needles. Understand that. I did. I knit with the same size needles. The only difference is, here's my first sleeve. I started off magic loop at the top because it's a small thing, and I, I probably switched about here to a size 16 inch circular. So, and I left the circulars hanging because you're going to join the sleeves. I didn't here because I'll explain. So, I did the same here except for I didn't switch to the 16 inch circular. I just kept knitting magic loop style. Because the so, other circular was otherwise occupied. occupied. So, here you can see that they're matched up side by side. I'm going to show you this. Perfect. Yeah, until you get here, it's still attached. Her row gauge look is at, crazy. That's, look at the your, difference. It's your row oh, gauge. My, but, but I definitely counted. I have no, but it's, it's, it's I know. your row gauge. I know, I know. I have 110 rows per each sleeve. I have 54 stitches around. You can feel the difference. Width wide, they're Width -wise okay. Is, no, it's, it's not a little, perfect. It's still a little narrow. It's, I mean, it's, but you can almost see where it started to change. Where's yeah, you can feel that this is a much stiffer. You can almost see, like if I line up my increases, it started to change about like right here where I pretty much switched. Switched, yeah. And so I blocked it hoping that this would change and loosen up, but you can feel the difference. So it feels like it's a still wet. Material. It's still damp. But it smells good. Um so tonight or when it dries, because it probably won't be dry. But it's tonight. it's it's interesting to me because the um the 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 gauge side, like the inch, the lengthwise gauge is fine. It might be off like a half a teeny stitch, bit, but not but enough to But the row notice. gauge is, is way it's off. off two inches. So here I am at work finishing it. I'm like, oh good. I looked. I'm like, why is this different? I checked to make sure that I did all my increases. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. And you can feel the denser no, fabric. No, it feels stiffer. So. And I'm like, I can't believe I did that. And I have to read it. And I knew it. something was wrong too because I had a bo small ball of yarn still left over. And you didn't on the other one. No. And I'm like, oh, so that was my epic fail of my sweater. Lesson learned. I am definitely a tighter knitter, magic loop style. Yeah. Which I kind of knew with my socks, but, but I didn't think it would make that much of a difference on a um, sleeve. But it does. On a sleeve. But Apparently yeah. Apparently it does. It really does. I have never and seen a row gauge vary that much. That's what's yeah. unbelievable to me. Well, it was off probably about a quarter stitch. But by the time you get up there, no, it ends up adding up. It's crazy. I mean, the the side-by-side -side gauge is a little off, but the it's, row yeah. gauge is like... It wouldn't oh. have been enough to make that much. I mean, well, actually, it's about a finger width off. Yeah, she probably could have lived, lived with that. You could have lived with it. <laughs> so then I was starting to think, I'm like, should I just do it longer? I'm like, no. No, you need to redo it. I'm so, sorry. So, yeah, I'm going to redo it. I'm going to take the time. Um, I'll put these in front of the fireplace to dry more. Probably not tonight. I'll just work on my sock tonight. I have to work tonight. Um, but I was so crushed. It I'm is like, very sad. Oh. That is a very sad heartbreak. It is. It really, I was just like, I can't believe. I was so close. I was telling everybody I was going to finish it, but now I know. And it won't It won't take long to do it. And now you know next time, even though it's convenient to leave that needle. Yeah, don't I'm not do going to do that. <laughs> Good to know. And I blocked it with the yarn still attached. Just, you know, because it was case. easy. Let's see. It's a All little right. damp too. But. Bobbles and bling. Because we, we got tons a of megaton. A megaton. Oh, and I'm going to have to mark this as um, explicit because I said the word shit. I'm sorry I said the word shit. As you continue to say it. I, well, I've already, that, that ship has already sailed. <laughs> sorry. It could have been worse. I'm just looking. <laughs> I look really tired today. Look at my face. I look really tired today. I think it's the lighting. Well, my face is really dry. It is really dry. It is. Well, because I have a massive hair. If you know, I have a, 
an acne problem right here, and I keep turning this way so you don't see it. <laughs> it's kind of handy, though, because, you know, it's natural to turn this way. It, well, yeah, I do that anyways. But um, I've been beauty. putting a lot of uh, acne medicine on it, which is drying my face. My eyes are really, really so, dry. So, anyways. Bobbles and bling. Mm, mm. I, Sheila and I went to Spa, which is a weekend retreat for spinners, and spinners and knitters. And that's all in. it is. I thought maybe spa meant Me for too. Something. I thought it stood for something too. No, it's just exactly what it says. It's, it's a the spider. New England. I don't remember something that Something guild, whatever. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, that. um, a lot of our favorite vendors were up there. My one of my personal favorites. She makes the other lace space that I adore. Mad Color Fiber Arts. The artist formerly known as um. Oh, I don't remember. She what formerly it. known as I can't remember now. Knit, knit spinity? No. No. I can't uh, remember. Um, anyway, she's we're gonna think the of artist like formerly known as something else that I can't remember now, which is good because Serenity. Ser Serenity. That's what she was. And now she is the artist known as Matt Color Fiber Arts. Her real name is Heather. Hi, Heather. Um, I bought this. I love this. This is a four ounce blade. Blade. Braid, oh, really? <laughs> a four ounce braid of superwash and nylon. So I could make socks out of it, but I won't. And even though it's not marked, I have it on good authority that this colorway is called Slow Burn. Yeah. And it goes from a bright orange, which is totally lost on this monitor, um, through a red. I don't know if you can. Oh, brilliant. That's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. Through a red to a maroon, and then it's almost a purpley black at the end. These are not normally my colors, but this was so beautiful I had to own it. It's gorgeous. And if she had had more braids, I would have bought a sweater's worth of this because it's really lovely. I'm going to spin this eventually as a gradient and make a shawl out of it because I think that would be really lovely. So that was um, Mad Color Fiber Arts. That was one thing. Then I got this giant mystery bat. And I say mystery bat because it has alpaca, wool, sari silk, sparkles, tassa silk, and whatever else was in the kitchen sink. I got this from Good Karma Yarn. And I I can't remember now if it's 8 or 12 ounces. I'm sorry. I'm looking at oh. I'm going to have to weigh it. Um, Sheila's going to help me. It is huge. Oh. Oh, my. You can wear this as a blanket. Yes, you could. Oh, my gosh. It's so soft. Isn't it? It's <gasps> just good. Oh, my God. I know. You kind of want to use it oh. as a blanket. Oh. It has sari silk, tassa silk, some kind of wool. I know it has alpaca. It's got a little sparkle in it. It's got a little bit of everything. It smells really good, too. You can't see me behind this, but it's like I'm just snuggling up with it. And it's got purples oh my gosh. and blues. Mm. And kind of, you can see, it's kind of a gradient thing. See, I would just buy this and just go like this. I know. <laughs> it's almost a shame to spin it. It's beautiful. Absolutely And gorgeous. I have some, um, I have oh, some gosh. other blues in my, I know, I had to buy it. It was the softest one that they had. Well, that, it, it, it must be something because of this, too. And this isn't the same... No, this is but. just random. Um, anyway, this is my uh, big bat. I'm and how many ounces? It. What? How many ounces? <laughs> could be eight, could be 12. I can't remember what they said. Oh, all right. I have to weigh it. I don't really care because it was I'd so say gorgeous. I eight ounces. I don't think I think it's, it's eight ounces. I think that's what they said, eight ounces. I kind of remember thinking that I have eight ounces of another blue in my stash. Four and putting blue. No, I have... I have you don't know about it. I have another eight ounce. I have I have four ounces of Cookie Monster, and I have eight ounces of another blue that I got oh. at um, another festival. Yep. And I was thinking if I put those two eight ounces together, I might be get, able to get close to, to a sweater's, sweater's worth, worth of um, worsted weight. Maybe I have a sweater's worth of DK if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. I could I could stretch it out. Right, blue sweater. I know, but it's <laughs> so pretty. So anyway, I love that good Carmen yarn. Um, they had other bats that did not feel that soft. When I touched that oh, one, that I was like, oh, I'm gorgeous. taking it all. Um, and then I got to my favorite vendor, Josette from Enchanted Knoll Farms. I have shown you her stuff before. She is one of the first independent dyers I ever brought sock yarn from back in the day. Um, I got two of these. It's so pretty. That's soft, too. 
I know. This is wool, silk, sari silk, and sparkle, and it is in the Freshwater Pearl colorway. And I have them in these Ziploc bags because they are, they like infect all other yarns. Oh, they're right. so fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> like everything has gray on it now from being in the bag. That's the other one. So this is a total of six ounces. This is definitely going to be spun for late lace weight or light mm. fingering to make a shawl out of because it's It's beautiful. gorgeous. So I love that. That, again, mm. Enchanted Knoll Farms. Yeah, we'll just get comfy over here. Yeah, I know. I, I bought a lot. And then I showed you earlier String Theory Hand Dyed Yarn. This is Merino DK in the North Haven colorway. And if you are that motivated, you can look on my project page because I have knit a cowl and matching mitts out of this same colorway in the caper sock base. I've never tried their Merino DK base, but I knew that I wanted to get something really beautiful to do that um, cowl that was gifted to me mm -hmm. by Kathy Monahan. That's what I'm using. It's really boingy. It's boingy. Yeah. No, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I love it. I'm very happy. String Theory um, hand dyed yarn. The main girls, not the other string theory that does the sock, striping sock. This is my favorite. This is my, one of my favorite independent dyers. That's I have, the one I that if you were stranded on a desert island. Caper Sock, their base is, is the absolute favorite base that I have ever knit with. It's one of my favorites. I would have that yarn on a desert island. So there's that. That's all again from the spa. Then <laughs> I know I did a little damage. Then I bought the cutest accessory bag for my um, spinning wheel from Jessalou Bags, who I've shown you her stuff before. I have a spindle bag that's out of the almost same. Mm. It might even be the same print, but it's very similar. Has gnomes on it because now I, not only do I have a sock monkey problem, but apparently I have a gnome problem. <laughs> um, and what you do is you snap it around and hang it on your spinning wheel. Knitting's my bag. Take note now that you're a spinner, you might want to offer something similar in your shop because. Um, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, you might want to. Thinking something else. You might want to offer something in your shop similar. That's accessories for a spinning wheel. Once you have a spinning wheel, you'll be able to work out some designs that you think work really great. <laughs> so, which I made her buy, like, everything. <laughs> Sorry, Lois. So, anyway, oops, and what do we see here? Uh, great Some fiber. of Josette's fibers attached to it. So, I love this. I keep all my little odds and ends in it, and it's good that I do because I also did a little damage on Etsy. I found out about this great shop on Etsy called Magical Moons and it's run by Terry Sackett and you can find it on Etsy. It's called Magical Moons. She, I I have been reading on the Shocked Wheel website that you need to condition the leathers under your treadles with um, hand lotion is what they recommend but the best thing is carnauba wax. And it's really hard to find carnauba wax. Is that a magnet? Yes, it's oh, a magnet cool. so you can stick it on something. It's really hard to find carnauba wax. It, it doesn't have good. a lot of other stuff in it. This is lavender scented carnauba wax. There's a magnet on the thing. So that is for my leathers. Um, you can also get a larger version of this if you want to clean your clean and condition the wood on your wheel with it. Carnauba wax is really great. Um, so I bought that to treat my wheel. And also, she sells this handy dandy thing, um, which is a spinning wheel oiler that's got a really precise point. And you can see it has her little store name on it. And it's, I believe it's refillable. And it makes me sad because my friend Paulette gave me this, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> which I forgot. I told her I wanted her to pick mm. one up. It's very similar. Um, and this one has a clip like a pen. But um, I think I will use both of them because this is really good for traveling. Yeah. And this one is really good for at home. So Magical Moons, Etsy, if you have a spinning wheel, check it out. She has really good, interesting, like wheel stuff and I thought the prices were very good and I am telling you this stuff arrived at my door like the next day it was really fast service so if you have a new spinning wheel Lois take note 
You need to buy this. Oh, and I have to laugh because this exact bag in a different pattern was shown on the His and Hers podcast by Melissa. Oh. She, her mom just got her one. I'm like, really? I had no idea when I bought this. So um, I think, I think that, oh no, I have one more bobbles and bling. I'm wearing it. You can't see it. I'm going to come forward so you can see it. Better. I was going to say take it off too. Yeah. Well, first I'm going to do this so you can see it better. This is. It may look familiar. This may look familiar. This is the Milkweed Shawl by Laura Chow out of Dragonfly Fiber Dance Rustic Silk in the Roasted Espresso Colorway. This is what it looks like when you hold it up. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And this was knit for me by Steven of Dramatic Knits, who is my internet boyfriend. We were fighting over him at yes. Spa. Everyone wants him to be their internet boyfriend, but he's my internet boyfriend. And um, I love. This he wrote me the sweetest note. Gorgeous. I have to read it to you. Hope you enjoy this. Hope the feel of it isn't too bad because he knows that I have those weird sensory issues. You mentioned not like that you not like 100% silk. This is rustic silk. If not, gift it to someone, and I would love to make you something else. Still my internet boyfriend. Thanks for the great podcast. Um, Steve, I would never knit with this. It would drive me crazy, but I can wear it, and I love it. It's called Roasted Espresso, but it's almost really a purpley brown. I love it's it. Gorgeous. This is so my color. I have, like, a million things that this will go with. So soft, too. It is. It feels beautiful. I just wouldn't want to... Um, have this running through See, my See, it wouldn't hands. bother me. I don't have a text. I, I actually actually changed outfits issue. because the first yeah, it outfit was black, and this one really doesn't show it any better, but um, it would have looked better on Sheila. It's so pretty. I love it, and I really needed it this week, Steve, because this week has obviously not been my best week ever. All right. You so that's know? That. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh I had a lot of bottles of bling. All right. So at Spa, we met... Heather, who trusts babe. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to met... put her picture up. Yes. Uh, Heather, who trusts babe. We met Tina, knitter freak. Deb, Deb Nets, which we met at Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. And Adele, Prairie, Prairie Girl, Girl Nets. Nets. And there was one more person who was afraid to come up to us. I know, we should have come up. And she should have because I am definitely one of those that would hide in a corner in situations like that. I am We're not. We're really nice. We I am bite. a very shy person, <laughs> which people laugh at because I do this, but really I am. So anyways. I made Sheila buy stuff. She did. I, I did. I, I forced she her She twisted to buy my arm. I did. She, she really, really did. Afterwards, I was like, get Suck it up. I was. I was physic not physically ill, but my stomach was upset because of guilt. Because I don't buy luxury items for myself. Sock is not I consider it luxury and I'll I've purchased probably one skein for the amount that I've purchased this, but sock is easy to buy for. I don't know. Anyways, I bought uh, from the Woolen Rabbit WW Cashmere. It's the worsted weight yarn, 80% Merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's 175 yards. They say it's worsted weight. I'm going to say it's a light worsted. Yeah, I think it's so a light worsted. So I bought worsted. two of these, and it, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Uh, they my intentions so gorgeous. are to do something for my neck, which may be that cowl. Yeah, because this would work with that. It's light enough that it would yeah. work with that. Yeah, and then mittens. Cool. Because um, I want a nice set. And this is just absolutely gorgeous. And I think it would bring out the green, which you guys can't see, but... Yeah, it looks green really good eyes. with her eyes. That was a good color for her. I love it. And Tell them then, the other um, thing. The other thing I also bought from Good Karma Yarn, it just intrigued me. And once I touched it... I wanted it, too, and it's not my color It's the worst all. weight... No, it's really not my color, either. Um, this is really pretty. It reminds me of 210 yards, 60% wool, 40% alpaca. It is this bright golden rod. You can't even. Squishy. It's so squishy. Poofy. This isn't really doing it justice. Uh, it is. It's marigold. It's marigold. Orange. It reminds me of sunflowers. That's what it called to me about yeah. sunflowers. I'd say more of a marigold, but you can't get a you good. You can't tell from this. It's not butter cream yellow like this is showing. It's um, more orange. I'd say maybe a um, one of those yellow van Envelope type, but prettier. It's like sunflowers. Uh, I'd call it more of a marigold, but it's so soft and squishy. That's it's gorgeous. um, it was a, it's a heavy worsted. Too. Oh yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, it was 
210 yeah 15 dollars so but i almost bought a sweater's worth but then i controlled myself <laughs> this uh, uh will probably become a cowl or something i love well. it but i also have let's see melody gave me um pm me saying after i had talked about my chai goo needles she said that she had tried them melody is mel raw knits m-e-l-r-a-w knits on Ravelry, she said she didn't like the Chai Goo needles, and she asked if I would like them, and I said certainly. So she gave me a 40 inch of size one and size one and a half, which is what I typically do my socks on. So thank you very much, Melody. I really appreciate it, and uh, can't wait to cast on for the one and a half. I'm already using the size ones for another needle, so those are great. And, and the oh, I, yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm saying oh, you have more? Last. Yeah, well, I got gifted a pattern. Oh, I got Candy gifted Land. a pattern, too, and I forgot to say what it was. I got gifted the Cowboy Cowl, which I was thinking maybe this in it, but it calls for 400 worsted weight, 400 yards, roughly. Cowboy Cowl by Candy, really or Candyland uh, on Candyland sent me a pattern, too, and if you give me your thing, I will look it up. Hold on, I'm I just trying to it. get... Oh, there we go. So, it's funny, because I looked at this, and I favored it, and I, I was looking at it the other night, and I, I thought it was in the round, because when you see this, you think it's in the round? It's not. Ooh. It's got buttons in the back, but I'm like, all right, I'm okay with that. So, um, I'm actually excited, because that's almost like a shawl. It could probably be worn as a shawl. Um, so... Can I change for this one? No. Uh, I didn't do any of that. I know, ones. but I haven't read that one yet. Change this one. Okay. <laughs> and my my favorite ones. My boyfriend. Mine. Steve from Drama Dramatic Knit sent me socks. And I believe these are the Mayfinch. Are they? Did he even say what they are? I, I went ahead and looked it up before I came on. Sorry, I didn't, but um, I want to say from watching his podcast that these are the Mayfinch. They're beautiful, whatever they are. Um, so, Steve, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. They fit wonderfully. They're so nice and toasty warm. I'm not wearing them because I want to show them off, but once the podcast is over, they're going right on my feet. And, Steve, you did not have to do this. Uh, it was to say thank you for the socks that I had knit him, but that was not my intentions. I did not knit them for you to get something back. I knit them because I enjoy knitting for other people. See, so, Steve gave something to me because he's my internet boyfriend. Okay. Hey, what happened here? It does that every now and again. Hit the Safari button. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't tell you how many times... Thank you. I appreciate this. You are a doll. You're a sweetheart. You are all kinds of kindest person that I hope my boys grow up to be like. Um, you are the boy, a guy, sorry, not boy. You are the man that I hope my boys turn out to be. Um, thank you. They do smell a little bit like vinegar, but I do know that you had a hard time setting these. I remember watching the podcast. Thank you. I'm going to heart them and keep them close. And call them George. <laughs> call them George. <laughs> I'm going to so, love them and squeeze them. And, and call them George. And I think that's all my baubles and blings, which is plenty. So while she's looking up her pattern, I can't find I'm going to go into gossip and innuendo. And I'm just going to give you a quick tip. So thank you, Steve, again. Mm, I love those. Quick tip. I learned this from something a while ago, um, but it brought brings it into play. Anytime you guys have a tube of lotion of any sorts like this, or I do it for my acne medicine because, you know, I'm 42 and I have severe acne. It just sounds like fun. You squeeze and you squeeze to get every last drop. Well, I read somewhere of a good tip that if you cut the tip of this off, see, I cut it off, you still get a lot of stuff in there. And I'm going to see if I can show you. This is still, yeah. Look at that. That's still like four days worth of product in there. And it sounds silly, but I mean, I squeezed this as much as I possibly could, and I still couldn't get anything out of it, but yet there's still quite a bit in there. So what I do is I cut this off, and I put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it moist. Otherwise, it dries out. And okay. it gives me at least four more days worth, if not more. And that's yeah. really 
scraping the bottom. And I mean, let's face it, this stuff isn't cheap. No. You know? So that's my question. Candyland, I can't seem to find it on here, so I'm going to show it next week. And I'm really sorry that can't I didn't remember print it out. I can't remember, but it's a really beautiful cardigan with a. Um, um, like an asymmetrical collar that I love and that I'm totally going to knit um, soon. So. Um, so we're hitting our 60-minute mark. I think we're going to do the Infinity Blocking Wires review next week. Unless you want to do them in a separate... Well, I could do it. I guess I could do it. We could do a little short episode after this. But okay, let's, let's announce give... the prize winners now. So the prize winners, what we're going to do is we're giving the number one, we already drew them, is the yarn, which is the Romantica 100% Merino Wool. It's in the Friars Bay St. Martin colorway, which I was told is a limited edition colorway. They're oh, not going to okay. make this very often, which is one of the so, reasons I got it. The winner of that is, I have it all written down. Retha knits a lot. Retha from Connecticut. You have won the lace yarn. So PM. PM me. PM Wendy. Give her your address and we'll send that right out. Send that right out. The second prize was a cowl that was generously gifted to us by Lisa Beamer. And it's called the Twisted and Twining Cowl. And it's a nice cabled goodness Very cowl. pretty. Very pretty. Her daughter is gorgeous too. And that went to N. Wheatley, who is Naomi from Oregon. And if you PM Sheila. Yes, PM me. And, and I will let Lisa know to, to send, send it off pattern. to you. Our next winner is. Oh, is of, the, of the Rosebud Trellis. Trellis, cowl, which was gifted to us by Kathy Moynihan to give to you. And which is the one that I'm going to knit for our Which is this one. one. That is going to Beefy8, who is Tammy from Illinois. And the last prize... So PM um, <clears throat> either me or Sheila, and we'll let her know to send you the right. pattern. The last prize is a gift from us. And actually, I don't even need this. It's going to be Crossroads. Crosswords at the Coffee Shop. Crosswords at the Coffee Shop. By Carrie Steinmetz. This is the one that girl. I was able to test knit for her. And she has blocked And I had blocked this properly. And oh, what a difference it makes. It's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. So we are gifting a pattern to Sandykins. Sandy Who is from Sandy from Sweden. Sweden. And um, so, so PM Sandy from Sweden. Sandy. Yeah. PM me, Sandy, and I will get that right off and to you. And we will send that and off And I just you. want to say thank you so very much for everyone who's posted a picture. Yeah, I love seeing all the different socks. Me too. It was so inspiring. And I'm so glad that we were able to help you guys get them off the needles. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad. And I'm glad um, we were able to give away some gifts. And there will be, um, we will discuss the prizes for the next Knit Along, which starts tomorrow. On our next episode. It, again, it has to be finished in March. It doesn't have to, be, have started to be started in March. March. This is a good way to finish, finish up. up any and you can double dip. Been sitting. If you knit them for our other groups, we don't care. As you just have to be a member of the group to post. Absolutely. And also, make sure that it's a picture of the post finished project and, um, you know, be honest about it. And that's it. it. So, um, for returning viewers, thanks for coming back. For new viewers, we really appreciate you looking in, and we hope you enjoyed the show. You can find out all the information about contacting us on our blog, which is at www.knit, the number one, heart, two, T-O-O, T-O-O, dot blogspot.com, and we have a tab called Contact, and that it has everything, it has uh, Ravelry, where, uh, Twitter, yeah. Plur, it has our P.O. Box. PO box, our email address, any way you would want to get, and we do try to check our e our mailbox once a week, but because my leg was jacked up to Steve, I didn't go last week, the one time when there was something in there for me. So, um, with that being said, I hope everyone has a great week, and, um, Thanks for watching us, Knit with Heart. Knit with Heart. And Bye. we'll see you next week. Bye.